okay. I think it was better for me than some other people. Um, I don't enjoy them, you know, because it's a long time. You know, the players are away. Only really got them all back as a group yesterday. So, you know, for a game of this magnitude, it's a short space of time to get the kind of work that you want into. But it's probably the same for Brendan as well. Yeah, I'd imagine so, because they've, they've been away doing their own thing and some have been getting a bit of a break and some have been away playing for the country, so they've had other things on their mind, obviously, and um, we've been just looking at a lot of... You don't really need to go far to see Celtic play, you know, the, you know the more or less them in, inside out, really. Still doesn't mean to say you, you're guaranteed to get anything from them, but um, listen, it's a great game for the players to look forward to, and when you're Playing in, in Scottish football, this is you know one of the fixtures that you want to enjoy, relish, and, and perform in. As a manager, how do you feel about going back there again? I know you've been back on a number of occasions, Neil, but when you actually step through the door again at Celtic Park, does that make you feel good again about yourself and about what you achieved there and and what you're actually achieving here at Derby at the moment? Um, I always look forward to going back and um, you know seeing the fans. You know they've. Very good, brilliant for me over the the length of time I was there for the 14 years on and off that I was there. So yeah, it's a it's a very special club. It means a lot to me. But Hibs is a very special club to me now as well. And I am very lucky to be you know in management at a club like this. And I've got a very good set of players that you know give me everything at the minute. And hopefully they'll continue to do so. If results go your way tomorrow, you win. Hearts lose, you could be top of the table by tomorrow night. Yeah, and if we lose and hearts win, we could be five points behind. Try to be positive here, Neil. <laughs> I'm trying to be realistic here, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a nice scenario. It would be psychologically brilliant, but there would only be, what, nine, ten games in. So, you know, I don't get all this talk of a title challenge and this, that and the other. But if we're 20 games in or 25 games in and we're in the same position, then we can start talking about being, you know, contenders. But for the now... You know, we're very pleased with the progress we're making, but that's all it is, it's, it's progress. Given Celtic's uh, form this season has been slightly inconsistent, is it a bit less daunting to go there than it, tomorrow than it would have been this time last year? Uh, I think it's always a daunting proposition when you go to Celtic. Um, you have to remember that this team have we've got players in there who have won seven titles in a row. They've played Champions League football, they've played European football, they've played international football. They've played hard football now for a long time, and uh, you know come out on top the majority of the time. So uh, they didn't look, you know, that in trouble last time out when I watched them at St Johnson. Yeah, you know they were devastating, and that's what they can do to you. So we got great respect for them, obviously, as a, a club and a team. But um, you know we're going there to try and win the game, and we're in good form. And hopefully it'll be a good advertisement for the Scottish game. That's all we can ask, really. Do you see a maturity and a, a development from within your team over the last couple of years that means that not so much yourself, but the players will go there tomorrow and not really be afraid of anything? There's no. It's pointless being afraid. You know, if you go in there with fear, then that can you know consume you. Um, you have to play with belief and um, you know not not fear losing, but hate losing. You know, there's a difference, um, and it, we can't get turned over quite easily. You know, well, not easily. You know, like I think we'd make a game of it, but Celtic can be ruthless at times. But we have performed very well. But that's in the past. You know, tomorrow's a different day, different circumstances. Um, but the mentality of the team has very has pleased me a lot over the last couple of years. I think psychologically, the mentality of the club has changed since the cup win. You know, and it's just been a a steady progression forward, but we, we're not complacent, we're not taking anything for granted. It's nice to have plaudits and that, but they don't mean a lot to me. You talked about mentality, obviously your, your home record has been sick to none in the last 10 11 months. Could going away from home against the Champions, getting a result, could that you know, lift that confidence mentality up even, even higher? Of course, yeah, but for a short period of time. You know, we're not, if we go there and get a, a positive result, we'll, we'll take it. And move on. We'll not, you know, dwell on it or not celebrate it for a week, like we used to do. We um, we want to be in that position where 
we go to the big clubs and we perform and we get positive results and we come away and go good job on to the next game. That's all it is. You know, it's very early in the season yet, and the, the, for me, the, the league hasn't really taken shape and probably won't do for another four or five games. Do you think there's an expectation then, maybe not to, to go to Celtic and, and win and get a result, but to at least compete at Celtic Park? Well, that's the, the minimum requirement they expect and demand from the players. You know, it's um, domestically they've been not, you know, very, very consistent at, at home. I think they've lost one game under Brendan, and that was a week before the cup final, and the league was already won. So that's how difficult the task is that we face going into the game. But it doesn't phase us. I think the players again should relish it, and um, you know, go subconsciously. You lift your game to play against the best anyway. You know, you want to play against the best. You want to test yourself and and measure yourself up against the best players. So I think in terms of motivating them for tomorrow. I'll not need much. We'll just take a bit of concentration and a bit of a bit of nice and see out the bad moments in the game when I'm sure they'll come. And what can you tell us about our, your new signing? I'll go for his nickname, Harry. Harry, Harry the Greek. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we had him in, and um, you know we had, a, we had a good look at us, we had a good look at him. We were pleased with what we saw. We just wanted to extend the the trial a little bit longer. He's come back. He's he's, he's agreed to join us. And um, he's got good pedigree. He's fitted in very well so far. Obviously, he's not up to speed yet, but he's in the squad for tomorrow. And we like what we see with him, and he's just a, another good acquisition to what we already have. Do you have an idea of where you would like to play him once he gets up to speed? In his best position. Which is, is it right back? Right back, right wing back. He could play one up any, anywhere down the right hand side, really. I think um, looking at him tactically, he's very good, and he's got a football intelligence about him as well. Uh, f physically, you know, he's in, he looks a good athlete and um, moves his way around the pitch. He's got a bit of experience behind him as well. And we'll see how it goes. You know, it's um, it's a short term deal that could branch out into something longer. That's that's down to Harry now. David Gray, okay? No, Dave's out. Um, still got ligament damage in the ankle from the, the tackle and the injury picked up against Hamilton. Um, I've well, got a list here. Paul Hanlon, McLaren, Ayapong, Boyle, Whittaker, Horgan, all doubtful for tomorrow. You know, varying degrees of injury and, and knocks, so we'll have to see how they are in the morning. That's quite a big list. It is, yeah. Mm, it's the last thing you need going to Celtic Park. But we're pretty confident the majority of them will be okay, though. Where's Mark Boyle come back from uh, his Aussie adventure in QA or wherever it was? Okay, I think he enjoyed the experience and. Um, I think he enjoyed interacting with Graham and, and Rennie Molenstein and obviously the, the players that were there. So I think he was on his Xbox a lot, which is typical of him. So but um, uh, he just trained with them for a few days because the paperwork's not through yet. So a uh, great experience for him, and you know I hope it continues in the same vein for him because it's a great opportunity for him. Do you think if Scotland were to come chaplaining his door now, Neil, there would be a a window of opportunity there for him. Yeah, I think so. Still open to him, yeah. Well, I, would I don't know. I would imagine so, but um, whether that ship was sealed, you know, Ack made it clear that there were, you know, a number of players ahead of him in that position, and you know, he was upfront and honest about it, and Martin appreciated that. So, you know, he took on the opportunity with Australia. Can I ask you a bit about Harry and the injury to David Gray? Was there anything in that with David's injury? No. No, I mean Harry was in long before David got injured. You know, training was you know maybe a month ago. Um, so no, that's not significant at all. He's not a direct replacement for David. He's just competition in that area. Can I, can I ask you about plastic pitches as well? I know some of the players have been asked. I know we've got here. Um, some of the players have been asked uh, and possibly looking to to have a vote as to whether the the SPFL should have him in the, in the top flight. Um, have you had any players come to you and say, I'm not keen on that, or I'd rather not play on that? Or yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Darren McGregor would struggle after a game on a plastic pitch, you know, with um, with the injuries that he's had over the years, and the, the recovery it takes for players after games is, you know, a day or two longer than it would be playing on grass. I've never 
been a big lover of them. I understand why clubs have them. But I think in the elite level, you know, I think the majority, well, all the pitches really should be on, on grass. But I understand there's a, a cost involved for a lot of clubs and it's cost effective for them. But I've never been a huge lover of them. I think there's too many in the top flight, to tell you the truth. That's my own opinion. One you could get away with, but we've got three or four, you know, it's too many. And I don't think it's easy on the eye either sometimes watching games on plastic pitches. But, but you say the elite level, but they play World Cup qualifiers, Champions League games, UEFA games, and these pitches are passed at the highest level of world football. Yeah, um, yeah, Champions League level, you know, I think some of the pitches at our level aren't great. You know, I think some of them, I think I touched upon last year, I felt one pitch in particular was dangerous. And a player actually done his cruise shit this season on it. Um, I know Hamilton have relayed their pitch, but that was in pretty poor condition this time last year. So... Livingston as well, you've been there with you. Yeah, it's not great. You know, but it's a new one, so it may take time to bed in. Um, I think if you're going to have a plastic pitch, this should be redone every year, you know, to, I think they get worn, I think they get bare, I think the bounce of the ball can differ, the pace of the pitch can differ as well, and the, obviously the stop starting, twisting and turning can have an effect on, you, you know, ankle joints and, and knee joints, and I know you can do your cruciate on grass, and I know you can do your ankles on grass as well, but I do think that the, the impact on the joints does have uh, a severe sort of detrimental effect as players' careers go on. Do you have a time frame on David Cruz? No. Um, you know, we were hoping he would be fit for the weekend, but the swelling is still there around the ligament. Maybe hearts in 10 days' time, maybe. Um, Paul, he's got a bad one as well, so he'll not make tomorrow. Um, he's got, like, there's like an impact on the thigh, you know, it became a dead leg, but actually turned out to be worse than that and there's calcified deposits in, in the thigh as well so um, it's a bit more severe than what we first thought as well so those two are definitely out for tomorrow. What the time scale between games now, you know, as you said, ten, you've had a break before this game, you've got ten days now, I think December though for you is looking... Well I, I touched on that you know, a couple of weeks ago, you know, we've got eight games in, in December, eight, you know, that's a quarter of the season in one month. I just think it's ridiculous. We've got five between now and the start of December, which is six weeks, you know, and then we have eight in four weeks. So it's a, a big ask for any squad of players. I mean, we'll need to break at the end of it. I know I, know I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah.